Autism is not a single thing. Autism is a term that describes what we call a clinical syndrome. It really can look different from individual to individual. However, there are characteristics that everybody with autism kind of shares, which is some level of dysfunction in social interactions, in reciprocal social interactions between two or more people, as well as the presence of what is called repetitive and restrictive behaviors. And the repetitive and restrictive behaviors could be especially things like um, difficulty changing your routine or hand flapping would be a repetitive behavior. So you can have people who are extraordinarily high functioning, integrated into society, and then you have, uh, which actually are a minority of people with autism, the majority um, won't live independently. And, um, and then there can be those with severe dysfunction who might need a caregiver or to be watched almost 24 seven. Precision health or precision medicine is beginning to look at the individual and treating the individual based on their characteristics. An important part of that is big data, collecting data around their genetics. What are their genetic risks for the disorder? Then there might be other things that we can also uh, collect. So in other areas of precision health, it might have to do with diet, exercise, for cardiovascular things. We can begin to look at that patient and understand what's the best what's the most effective diet in this patient or in this class of patients to avoid diabetes or to avoid heart attacks, et cetera. So we've now identified over 200 different genes in which mut single mutations are sufficient to cause autism. And so with that, we can now take we can genetically engineer mouse models. We can make a model of a particular gene mutation. Again, that's been used across all of biomedicine. We can take human-induced pluripotent stem cells, which are we can make from a patient's skin biopsy. We can correct the autism mutation in that. We can understand how, from a neurodevelopmental standpoint, how the brain develops in a dish using these stem cell models, building organoids. They're not brains, but they're brain-like. They contain all the cells that are in the brain. And we can see what might be the abnormality in the way the neurons, the brain cells, are communicating with each other or the way they develop. And because we can do that in a dish, we can do that in extremely high throughput, very parallel. So I can perhaps do dozens of mutations in parallel, and I can screen hundreds, if not hundreds of thousands of drugs in parallel to see if I can reverse what I'm seeing that's abnormal. And so this technology, using genetics to engineer cells, and then screening using high throughput methods, that is highly parallel, thousands and thousands at a time. We can now do here at UCLA in a very um, efficient way. To move from thinking of autism as a single thing to understanding it in the individual, research is essential. We have to be aware that to move to get better therapies to impact a larger percentage of people with autism, research is really essential. And especially multidisciplinary research, the kind of research that we're doing here at UCLA where we're connecting multiple different facets of the disorder. That means we work in teams. It's really team research to understand autism from all its various aspects.